Hello and welcome back to the Aerodynamics of Hypercars series. Today we're going to be looking at the active aerodynamics of the Porsche 918. Now of all the hypercars I'm talk about in this series, this is actually the only one that I've had a lot of time with up close and personal. My local Porsche dealer had one in and so I got to really look really closely at it and check out what was happening there. And even with that said, I rate it as the second lowest of all the hypercars. And Basically, my number one gripe with it is it's heaps conservative on its aerodynamics, like very, very conservative. And to top that off, it's really heavy too. So the aerodynamics have less effect. So my guess is, is that they just went all out for trying to gain back mechanical grip and they weren't too fussed about trying to get huge amounts of downforce or anything like that. Luckily, Porsche has made my life quite easy by doing a lot of good marketing material that I can really use for analysis. And they do this great comparison between the uh, Carrera GT and the 918. And the first thing I noticed that I thought was kind of funny is that the lift to drag ratio for the Carrera GT is notably superior to the 918. Obviously, the point they were trying to prove with this graph was that with the active aerodynamics, they can configure it so it either has better downforce than the Carrera GT, or it has better drag. But the point is that at no point does it have concurrently better downforce and drag. So I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, let's look at these three configurations. So they consider them efficiency, speed, and performance. So in the efficiency configuration, obviously that's not for track use or anything like that. Fully retracted rear wing, uh, under tray basically flattened off, and then they close in the brake cooling duct. So that's just your standard road configuration, nothing too special there. The main thing I'm gonna look at is the difference between the speed and the performance. So for speed, the wing is up, the under tray looks like it's still flat at the front, and the, um, the cooling ducts are open because obviously it's still going to be going quite rapidly. And performance, the main changes are they increase the wing's angle of attack and they open up the front um, floor vents. As I mentioned in my previous analysis videos, these front floor vents will help to balance out the increased downforce created when you up the angle of attack of the rear wing. So from that point of view, that's all good there. Also, I do like how Porsche has its floor venting in terms of getting it out and around the wheels. Looking at that rear wing in depth now, we can see that it's a pretty similar system to the P1. You've got your two main actuation rods, and then you've got an angle adjustment in the center. So nothing too complicated there, pretty basic. And the interesting thing that I thought here is that my gripe about the P1's rear wing was that all its actuators and everything were exposed. If we look at the 918's wing, they've got exactly the same actuation system, but the actuators are hidden. So that's a better application. However, by the same token, if we look just at the wing juncture just here, we can see that there's an exposed area of RAM. And in the P1, it's the opposite way around. The RAMs are exposed down here and then it's streamlined up here. So I would probably argue that the P1, while it's lost out on support drag, is actually probably gaining back in terms of having less disturbance to the underside of its wing. So from that point of view, I probably, in the end, do prefer the P1 supports over the 918s. Continuing to look at the rear wing, you can see that the profile is conservative, okay? It's a single element wing, it's got no end plates, it's quite small, it's not particularly cambered, and this is really my gripe overall with this wing. It's, it's nothing, it's, it's barely going to be effective compared to what all the other guys are running in comparison. It just doesn't compare to the competition. And while it looks kind of cool, if you watch my video on do car spoilers actually work, you'll see that a wing of about this size doesn't actually produce very much downforce. So from that point of view, that's a pretty significant loss from the Porsche, especially when they're running active aerodynamics, which as I've mentioned previously, is something that allows you to get away with really big wings because you don't have to worry about drag penalties. So that's just a little something to note there. Going back to that under tray, this is with the front extraction slots open. And I really do like how the 918 has its front extraction. The way it works with the sort of skull behind the wheel and the exit to the rear. I know the other guys do this as well but this was the only one that I could find a really good picture on. So that's a plus from my books there. Um, I guess flattening that out means that while you're not extracting, you still have a smooth underbody, so you're sweet there. But combined with a conservative diffuser at the rear, 
you can see why the 918 is not making anywhere near the downforce. It's at almost a third of the downforce of the one-to-one -one and the P1. And that's quite obvious. The reason why it's still comparably fast around some tracks is because it's got that advantage of four-wheel drive. And I'd hazard a guess that it may have more mechanical grip than the others. Obviously, I have no way of proving that, but I would think that that's the only way it can remain competitive. So, that's the analysis of the active aerodynamics of the 918. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, see you next time. Thank you.